Hi everyone, welcome back. This is going to be a fun one for me to make today. Uh, what you're looking at if you're coming to this channel for a repeat visit is likely something you're familiar with because a lot of my work has been referencing the Florida Maquis Earth Grid Network research. right here to illustrate something to you that I found out uh, just in the last couple days and kind of stumbled across this information. Uh, I've got kind of a prop down here. This is a dodecahedron, but it's there as a reminder for the centricity of the number five, it, that the Florida Maquis is also found very correlative to the research that he's been doing with this Earth Grid Network. As uh, those are familiar with, the research, uh, these nodal points that he's finding are literally pentagonal structures that are energetic anomalies, let's say, electromagnetic anomalies maybe is a better way to label them, about the Earth and there's a tremendously complex Earth grid network. Uh, as I've instructed viewers to do in the past, I think this photo is, is going to be a reminder to us at all times. Uh, as we go into these crazy concepts, to keep an open mind, I, these are simply intuitions and, re and paths of research that I've come across, and some of it I don't really subscribe a conclusion to yet, but very interesting paths indeed uh, that line directly up with the work that the Florida Maquis has been doing. And to those familiar, you'll, you'll notice this as the pattern that I've been referencing in reference to the Earth Grid Network research on my channel and uh, referencing both expansion of the earth joints here with pentagonal energetic structures around them to illustrate some some curious things going on cosmically in the galaxy you can go to my last video to, get, to brush up on that research but then also referencing the the buckyball in which uh, I am surmising these points these energetic points are activating right now aside from all of that uh, let's go back here to these to these graphics and uh, just soak it in for a second longer. Again, what you're looking at is the Earth Grid Network and what the Florida Maquis is labeled the DC Parasite Network. And that's going to be one of the concepts for breaking apart this video that's going to be important moving forward is that he labeled this thing the Parasite Network in DC. And I present you a graphic over here which is somewhat prescient. Uh, this isn't common amongst the popular culture quite yet, but among the video game community. But this is actually a badge, a graphic of sorts, for an upcoming video game called uh, Death Stranding, which is coming out for the PS4, I think sometime next year. And so that graphic, as far as I can tell, because there's there are a few, precious few details relating to this game's plot quite yet, but there seems to be an overarching psionic based government organization that bears the badge that you see here on the side of their as their emblem as their shield and i don't know about you guys but if this doesn't scream dc parasite network to you i don't know what does i i don't know how accurate the Florida Maquis, rep how much more accurate the Florida Maquis representation of, of the Earth Grid Network here can get. But I wouldn't, I'm going to go into how this upcoming video game somehow has something to do with the Earth Grid Network that we're talking about. And there, again, there are more question marks that I leave open for now and only present to you kind of the paths that I've found so far with, with hopefully more to come and deciphering what they mean in the future. But we've got some pretty heady stuff to get into, and I'm also going to say we're also going to reference Hideo Kojima's last video game he did, Metal Gear Solid V, and how it factors in to the Parasite Network. And if anybody's played this game, they'll probably be acutely familiar with the concepts of parasites and the thematic qualities that this game carries with it. And again, we'll get into that later on in the video. Um, but first. I wanted to go back to the Florida Maquis video again that he again, supplied the KMZ file with this morning, which we were referencing over here on Google Earth. But more importantly in the video today, he brought up some really important concepts relating to serpents. 
and he's been he's on to something with the language of the serpent. This is an Ouroboros, as he's talked about, and this is the infinity symbol, and we'll get into some more symbolism potentially and break apart with Ouroboros on another day, but I only point to it for for reference sake. He goes on to say that the serpent itself represents the number five, to be the number five, because Sir Pent, Pent as in Pentagon. Pent, the number five, and then finally, of course, Pentagon. And then I reference, of course, our dodecahedron down here, just kind of, you know, for show and tell purposes, until, until we start looking at some books later in. Um, but this has everything to do somehow with these earth grid networks that we're talking about. This is, this is all connecting up. And I'm also going to get into some research recently that I've uncovered based around serpents in Graham Hancock's latest book, America Before, which is an incredible read. It's really dense. It's 600 some pages long, uh, but it's fantastic for figuring out what's going on in, in our ancient archaeological past. And somehow, there's a lot of, while it doesn't reference Antarctica specifically, it does reference another place that uh, people with the Florida Maquis channel are really familiar with in South Africa, or South, South America, excuse me. And the monoliths that exist here, down there, actually with incredibly illustrated images, I'll just kind of give you guys a teaser for, for all this stuff. I don't know if you can see this, but this is, these are clearings down in, in the jungles of South America, for when the clearing's happening to make way for all the farming that they're doing, they're finding these ancient monolithic structures. And long story short, basically city infrastructures down there, I don't know if those are clear or not, but that can, can stand people up to 10 million populations large. So earlier on in the book, there's some stuff about serpents that we're going to get into in relation to what he's talking about here with this theme of penta and pentagons and how it relates to serpents and even ancient Atlantis as as we're going to get into with this book here with Frank Joseph's work so that's kind of a primer for where this video is going guys um, I'm going to get back to Death Stranding real quick and explain at least what I know to be the case about this video or about this video game rather they just did a Tokyo Game Show demo of this thing the other day. And they, unle they unveiled a bunch of different concepts and systems from the game. Um, but most importantly, they, they kind of uh, let Hideo Kojima, the creator of the game, talk through quite candidly what, what was happening here. And he, he keeps very vaguely marketing this concept of stranding. And he's creating a meme, somewhat. He's creating some sort of a meme that's being infected into our language that he's quite good at doing to get us bought into some sort of a concept called stranding. And it in, the game involves the, the, this overlay map, and you basically have to get from point A to point B. And point A being... Washington DC across the West and there's this concept that he keeps referring to as you need the you need to bridge the East and the West or connect the East to the West so we're sitting here looking at things that are very earth grid network like in nature having to bridge from East westward and manually do it while carrying cargo of some sort you're a contractor carrying cargo on foot literally across the United States. Here's some more graphics, him talking about the game. And there's this other weird concept that you're going to see that connected to your person. It's very weird. And the baby has something to do with your ability to strand, as Hideo Kojima talks about, and it connects you to the real world. So in this very odd psionic way you're connected to this baby in whatever is this resemblance of the United States 
there's no one around you. There's always this this over overarching concept of you're alone in this game, and you're connected through this baby to its mother. So this baby's being incubated in its mother in the real world, while you're in the background connecting some sort of nodal network up here in the psionic realm. All is all I can can think about because there's th there's this weird stuff that pops up anytime that uh, you go and you look into this game just a little bit. Here are some more screenshots of it where you've got these echoes as you're going about the environment. All I can guess is maybe real people, maybe not. Ghosts of some sort, but then you're transported through time and now all of a sudden you're in this ghastly r reliving of World War II, but somehow this black tar existed, so maybe it's just like this uh, this representation of some sort of a war meme, right? Either way, whatever this stranding meme is that he's creating is very curious. This is a real creepy photo too. Here's the spider web iconography again too. So um, all I can say is, is based on what I know about memes and what Richard Dawkins taught us, and well, he didn't really, he kind of discovered these, right? He, you can kind of credit Richard, Richard Dawkins with some pretty good theories. I don't agree necessarily with all of his evolutionary theories, actually. Um, I'm not one to follow all of his conclusions in, on that front, but I really do like his, his meme work. I think he's spot on with this stuff. And in, so as it states, in academic circles, the meme concept, whilst having its dedicated supporters, has been viewed with suspicion by many, derision by some, and outright hostility by not a few. Memetics, a field of study developed from the 80s onwards, is often accused of trespassing in fields such as psychology, sociology, and attempting to replace well-established and coherent analytical tools and models with, half, with as they say, half-baked and insufficiently scientific notions. So they go on to say this, this is a pseudoscientific dogma and, and da 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 da. When you study it in college, is coupled right alongside anything you're going to learn about advertising because I'll tell you what that's what I studied in college got a degree in marketing and decided I was never going to touch <laughs> touch the the meme technology that is advertising because you learn well, I had some really good professors that told me early on I'm going to have to make some judgment calls uh, in terms of how I kind of want to sell my soul or not to the process of, of becoming part of this system. The system that really uh, Noam Chomsky calls the five media filters. And they, they warned me that I'd have to partake in basically this process and sell my soul to it in order to really get around to uh, <laughs> sleeping at night, I guess is a really good way to put it. And I chose not to go down that path ultimately, and I thank I thank myself every day for doing that. I I, I ultimately paid, uh, you know, sixty thousand dollars in college tuition for perspective, but it was some of the best perspective I ever got because what I learned, of course, is that memes are very very real, and that they are just like viruses of the mind, as they as they are actually termed. In that they're really infectious and. You know, we've come to know, even with this Nikola Tesla picture as an example of a meme that we call in these in, in daily life, this is an example of how a meme can communicate a lot in very few words with some iconography. But memes can go very deeply into the, into the psychological realm, and I think there's been detraction against it ever since the 80s because the CIA, coupled with some mind control techniques, used memetics. Uh, to instill the programming that we know today as TV and movies and video games like I'm pointing at with this. And it's all an example of what the memetics are, 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 are that are being embedded. And so my argument here is this stranding that's being put together here is somehow related, of course, with this iconography of the Parasite Network from DC, which Oh my God, Florida Maquis has already found out and is connecting 
to so many other places. So, getting back to getting back to his uh, to 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 this a little bit, right? Um, as the video game goes through, you find out you're connecting these nodes. This is a prepper <laughs> that they called, and he's he's you're connecting east to west, and so you're establishing um, essentially what their equivalent of the Big Brother spy network is. You're finding out where these people are, you're delivering something to them, but in doing so, you're adding that location to the map. So in some sort of a way, this is kind of taking what was just wilderness and making, you know, under the guise of Big Brother. Not sure really how to interpret that yet. Um, but the demo goes on. And eventually, he finds himself in these nightmares where he's got the baby, and he's throwing his own blood at it. And this is real strange to me. He's weaponized his own DNA. And it's, it, you, it, you can use semen in this. You can use blood. You can use urine. You can use excrement from the shower. It's very strange how much... In, of this infinitesimal detail that Kojima has put into these subsystems in this game, all around this kind of psionic, almost um, ketamine trip world. It, it's kind of, as I've as I've heard ketamine described to me as it's been taken. It kind of elicits a reaction like this, where you're almost like in a dead, superimposed st state of animation. Um, but he's fighting these really weird nightmarish creatures with this blood as the demo persists. This big centaurian looking thing. Here's maybe a side profile of it. It's just very strange. And all of a sudden, you know, things lighten up, lighten up, but he's he just continues onward to these to these facilities to drop off the goods, these shipping facilities. And this really looks like again, I'm only putting variables into the equation here. I'm not necessarily connecting all variables because I don't know what they mean even to me yet. This is kind of a new uh, video that came out the other day that I'm sure I'm going to analyze quite a bit. But um, it's kind of this it's kind of strange. I, I, Stargates come into mind, right? This uh, very odd traversal, um, what's actually maybe metaphorically happening behind the scenes. The meme of stranding will become more clear to us as we go. But um, I can tell you what, getting back to the Parasite Network and using the terminology that Hideo Kojima used in his last game, there are more connections we can draw. And I just want, <laughs> it's, just, it's just too weird that this is the main iconography in the video game. And uh, anyway, parasites, the word parasite, the parasite network. This is what this game is all based around. Metal Gear Solid Five. it's based in, funny enough, a, a year a lot of people on the conspiratorial side of things should probably know in 1984. And it's based around this concept of of civil war breaking out in several countries caused by you know a deep state sovereign the CIA is involved with it and to truly grasp and understand the backstory of course it's it's a video game series you can go get the backstory of the characters if you'd like but they're real relevant to tying it together for this story uh, in particular Metal Gear Solid 5 in itself is all we're concerned with. And I'm going to read you the, the summary of what this game is all about and then tie it in to Ebola and some of the other stuff we've been talking about as well. This is, I know guys, kind of a dense, crazy video that's bouncing all over the place, but bear with me. I think I'll, I'll, t I'll attempt to do my best to connect it all at the end and, and show you why this matters. So, here it, here it goes. In 1984, an outbreak of the vocal cord parasites occurred at Mother Base, which is the base, I, I guess I'll just pause, and Mother Base was uh, headquarters, essentially, for this uh, private military contractor group. It spread amongst the speakers of Kikongo. Ignorant of the cause and unable to treat the infection, 
Venom Steak, one of the main characters of Diamond Dogs, which is his organization, rescued Code Talker from Skullface's XOF forces in order to discover a way to halt the spread of the parasite. Notice the word parasite. So Code Talker is a Native American who is actually an engineer who's genetically modified and developed these parasites, which... doing in our daily environment today, funny enough, is attacking language. What does everybody know basically about the shadow banning and people censoring their language on YouTube to reflect a message that's both they're trying to get across but can't speak? I want you to keep that in mind. People are not speaking specific words. They're not saying specific dates when specific tragedies happened. So in a way, the, the meme that is now spread through the society is one that is se have, having the population self-censor themselves. Very interesting, because this game itself that has a physical parasite there, that's taken in to the host, a person, and beds in the lungs, and lest the person get infected fatally with uh, the parasites consuming the host, the person. Here's here's a a picture of what the parasite infecting the lungs looks like in the game. Actually, right over here. It's kind of gnarly, but here's here's actually a pretty good representation of what the parasites are in the game too. This this little jar here, this little technology piece, right? It looks like a microchip. This is what the parasites look like. And so these parasite strands embed themselves by the code talkers engineering into the host in the lungs and they give them specific powers in exchange for a harmonic energy frequency speaking so the parasites themselves own energy source its own food is speaking what is a meme but of what an infectious idea a virus and in its in its only objective is to spread and to become as popular as possible. So there's this metaphoric representation of memes happening here. Very, hopefully, obviously, to you as the viewer, now looking at all of, all of the evidence and Code Talker encoding specific detriments and benefits to certain frequencies being, being harmonized with. He, just like with this Kikongo strain here, he put in, cer there are certain mutations that would occur that, if spoken, would cause a fatal infliction of a wound, and the person would get this infection disease and die. And so, famously, the game was all about the English strain. This Skullface character in the game wanted to eliminate the, the language of English from the face of the planet, and he wanted to do this by infecting the whole population with a, par a certain type of parasite that would infect in the vocal cords of all English speakers, and if triggered by English, would kill them. Need I go back to this? We're being triggered to shadow our languages, be, or langu the, the, the spoken language that we have, express language, behind certain parameters at which we only have a, a, a choice but to survive, right? I guess is the, is the defense on YouTube, because everybody wants to maintain the profit that they get, I, you know, I, I don't get a profit on this side. I'm, I, my channel's small, so I can only I can only assume. But something's happening here, <laughs> where with this parasite, with a vocal cord parasite, the meme that's infected us effectively, the metaphoric meme, which is our own vocal cord parasite, has infected us to where we are censoring our language, just like those that are infected with the English language in this game don't speak. In fact, there's a character called Quiet right here who knows she's infected with the virus and so she she simply doesn't speak. This is this is her. And so it's very interesting and the, the plot of the video game all unfolds. It's it's a, it's a story by the end that you probably don't care about, but uh honestly it's it's all a very interesting tie-in because the 1984, of course, as we also know, is a very important year for censorship in general. And 
1984 George Orwell's novel. As the New York Times states in this, in this actual article written in 1984, it's a political statement. It contains no prophetic declaration, only a simple warning to mankind. Orwell did not believe that 35 years after the publication of his book, the world would be ruled by Big Brother, but he often proclaimed that 1984 could happen if man did not become aware of the assaults on his personal freedom and did not defend his precious right, the right to have his own thoughts. The survival of each of the three Orwellian states was based on the following interior and exterior strategies. The state had to subdue its citizens in a mindless mass which executed the, the will of Big Brother. The state had to fuel the hatred of the population against its enemy through a constant state of limited war. At all times, the state could have the capacity to destroy the other states so that each one's military strength would be deterrent to all-out war. And finally, the states should periodically change their alliances to prevent the union of the two states of, against the third. So sadly, guys, this, is, this has happened. I mean, anybody that's even familiar with Florida Maquis' work should know that, that statement's the case. We, we live in the Orwellian state today. It's pretty blatantly obvious the overlay that it paints with the vocal cord parasite story in this video game, Metal Gear Solid V, too. This is kind of in your face we are living this right now and this is the meme that's affecting everybody we're being self-censored it goes really deep I'm not really sure if the game itself is trying to say something for or against it if this is a positive influence on someone or a negative influence on someone I, the jury's still out with me maybe Hideo Kojima is literally getting his message through he's got some real deep level matrix like thinking going on with this stuff and ever, anybody who's ever Knowing how crazy the guy is can probably identify to that, but man, um, it, it, just just the just the similarities that it causes with a couple of stories that that Joseph Farrell's done lately. One relating to blood, and then the other one I told you guys about relating to Ebola. Uh, remember the blood grenades I showed you earlier in the video? In fa there's there's a whole tie into this Theranos blood story in 1984. I wrote him an email that I've got copied right here, guys, that I, I, I tied into the podcast that got released, the, the Elizabeth Holmes podcast about Theranos. The fact that she was born in 1984, 12 days after the release of this video, January 22nd, 1984, Super Bowl 18 was the day that the famous commercial The Orwell, uh, the Orwell commercial, the Apple commercial, came out, where the lady runs through. They've got your drones, and she comes in and and busts through the wall, throws the hammer, right? Comes up. He's saying all the stuff he's saying. She flings it at him. What I find real interesting about the moment of impact, too, right there, and I didn't really have this pulled up, but uh, you you guys saw this picture the other the other day. There's some Nordic symbology going on, essentially. You guys saw this image, right? This image of Nikola Tesla here with the uh, Thor's hammer, right? Delete all that out of there. Um, the hammer the, upon impact becomes electrified and blows up. This is, this is Norse, Norse uh, iconography here. Also very astutely pointed out by Florida Maki in his recent work, the ties to the Nordics, right? And then on, and then this message comes out. You'll see why 1984 won't be like 1984. Well, the curious thing in it that I found out is that Elizabeth Holmes was born 12 days after the commercial aired. The commercial aired January 22nd, 1984. And another curious piece. Where did I put that? Just a second here. The dropout. Here we go. These are the list of episodes for the dropout. 
the series that ABC News did on the Theranos blood story. You come down here, check it out. Myth making. Totally mimetic in nature. It, it, they're, they're brainwashing you. They're brainwashing everybody when they do this type of thing. This is programming. January 22nd, 2019, 35 years to the day after that commercial aired. What did Elizabeth Holmes, who did she idolize? Steve Jobs. She dressed like him. She became a deep baritone in voice quality. She wore the same turtleneck as he did from the same fashion designer. Something's going on with Apple, right? It's, it, we, we don't know everything yet. We don't know. And I'm just pointing all of these, these things out to you because there's, uh, there's a meme being infected amongst all of us, and we should probably be paying attention to it. Ebola ha could have something to do with the infection of that meme. I think it's curious that the Theranos story is popularized. Even Joseph Farrell's work is uh, not even gotten around to it. He hasn't responded to this message I sent him, curiously enough. So I, I'd love for him to to give me an assessment on it. But uh, some, some really weird stuff tying her family to Enron and... Um, it's it's just it's crazy guys so um where where do i want to go next um please do look up noam chomsky's five media filters this will the meme wall the meme qualities of this will make sense going through ownership advertising the media elite flack and the common enemy i'm going to link this video in the description too it's a very nice uh animation that al jazeera did a few years back and um, anyway, the thing I wanted to get into next, I suppose, is uh, going to be all around pentagonal structures. So I'm going to actually cut this video off here, and I'm going to pick up a new one and hopefully post it here in short order because it's going to be recorded right after this about the pentagonal structures going into the Atlantis Coming Ice Age book. I was talking to you about talking about the number five and what serpents have to do with it. And of course, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of the teaser from the last time that we talked. If you recall, Draco came into play, a serpent, previous video. I'll leave it at that for now. I'll, I'll see you guys shortly. Uh, like, share, subscribe to my videos if you find it informative. And uh, thanks a lot.